so we're gonna talk about electric vehicles, but um, the cool thing about you that I always am fascinated by, um, if you bought an appliance in the past 15, 20 years, you should thank Kathy, because she was one of the main <laughs> architects of the Energy Star rating system that the EPA rolled out. So, <laughs> fun fact. Thanks, Kyle. Um, can we do a show of hands? Who owns an electric vehicle? A few, not a lot. Um, but EV adoption is going quickly. So 5% last quarter, doubled yeah. last year yeah. in the US. Who, who's an enthusiast for EVs? There we go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Can I ask one more question? Yeah, go for no, it. this is your interview. No. Like, um, how many people? How many people in the audience? Be brave. Have not ridden in an EV. A few. So most people have ridden in an EV. Okay. Good to know. In this conference. Um, I was going to ask. You've been in the role about five years. Do you think the adoption you're seeing now is it faster or slower than you would have thought? when you took the job? I, I think it's about what I would have expected. Um, I, and and um, it's just a classic, it's a, it's a classic hockey stick, right? Like yeah. right in the next 24 months, it's expected that we're gonna have 50 new EV models. And when I started at EVgo, you could either do a Nissan Leaf or an ID, a BMW ID4 and that was it, right. um, or Tesla. Um, and now there's just so much choice. So whatever kind of car, you want to drive or ride in or lease, you have a choice. Big, small, family, sports car, they're all, they're all becoming available. Pickup truck. Pick up, pick up, right. Dare I forget the urban cowboys, yes. Right. <laughs> um, and the Ukraine crisis, how much of a factor or a force do you think that is? Do you think it makes a difference now? Well, I mean, you've seen the same data I have, like the most common Google search now in America is for EVs or something like that. Yeah. So, so it is the, um, it's, it's a horrible, horrible crisis, the, but the unintended sort of benefit for electrification or transportation is that going EV is on many more people's minds. So that's, that's, that's a good thing for the climate. And you mentioned hockey stick. Is it like, are we at a tipping point situation or is it going to be more of a gradual? Well, I think we have a supply chain. Look, we, have a, we may have a near-term supply of EVs issue, but I think that'll be a 2022, maybe beginning in early into 2023 issue. The, the car company, there's not a car company that EVgo works with and we work with everybody, or that I even know of that's not electrifying. Right. I mean, we, we announced a couple of months ago a partnership with Toyota. And again, for a long time, the word was Toyota's just going to go fuel cell, that's it. Yeah. Um, and Toyota was clearly planning for electrification, and they're now going very, very big. So, um, there's so many new car companies. It's not, you know, not, and it's not just Tesla. It's obviously, it's Rivian, it's Lucid, uh, it, 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 you know, Nikola's back on track. There's a whole bunch of other electric vehicle companies that are, that are smaller that are going to grow and be big behemoths. Because, so it's all the... $500 billion has been committed by those car companies to electrify. That is unstoppable. Right. It's kind of sunk cost. It's, it's, gonna, it's a it, it's good investment conclusion. rather right. than, I wouldn't call it a sunk yeah, cost. Yeah. I call it great investment. Right. <laughs> um, I did want to ask about supply, though. You know, Ford has stopped taking orders for two of their super coveted EVs. They're among the, you know, the most researched, most marked up vehicles in the country, you don't think battery will be a bottleneck in the next ongoing? I don't, I don't, I think it could be a, a near-term limitation. Yeah. I think that every single car company that I talked to is thinking about lithium supply and they're going upstream. And you can sort of harken back to maybe a century ago when the steel companies had to think about raw materials as well. I think all the car companies are thinking about raw materials. I think, I think Elon Musk is thinking about raw materials. I think Mary Barra at GM is thinking about raw materials. They all know that it's really, really important and they will make investments accordingly. And in terms of allocation, do you think they're very serious about sending these vehicles outside of states with the zero emission mandate? Like, will we see them in the heartland? You bet. I mean, we, EVgo has a, we have a, a partnership, a $90 million partnership with General Motors to build uh, across the country. And why? Because GM intends to sell EVs into their traditional marketplaces, which are the heartland. 
So uh, we're absolutely going to see EVs everywhere. I mean, that's why we need to build the infrastructure to get out ahead of that. Uh, your decision making. Yeah, let's talk about that. I ask you this every time. Um, in the media, we like to talk about the chicken and egg analogy. Your folks talk about the hot dog and bun. Like, what's the what's the best metaphor, and how do you how do you plan your infrastructure? How far out, and where, and yeah, so so what what EVgo our particular sweet spot is fast charging. Uh, is, and we've got the most expansive, fast charging public retail network in the United States right now. Um, every single fast charging stall costs about $130,000. You got 2,000 of those or so. Yeah, between 17 and 1,800 right now. Um, so that's $150,000. And so w what we do is it's a significant capital investment 2,000 components in every single charger. It's a real construction project. Before we decide to build a new station, we have to run the math and make sure that that station is going to pencil on behalf of our shareholders. Pencil when? Um, we, we underwrite the assets over about an eight or ten year life, okay. which is pretty conservative. They, you know, they may last longer, but this is early days, so we, we, we do that. Um, and we look at, we have proprietary models that tell us what is the use of those stations going to be over time. So we look very, we, you know, we use the BNF forecast on, on EV penetration. We overlay our own sort of down to the census block predictions about how that much that asset's going to get used, how much, how dense is the housing right in that area, because the more multi-unit dwellings you have, the more reliance on public fast charging you're going to need. Because like I live in an apartment in Santa Monica, I don't own my apartment, I don't have charging in my apartment. So I have to rely, when I'm in Santa Monica, I have to rely on away from home charging. So all of those factors, is a, you know, it's a regression model with 12 variables and machine learning and all those fancy things, but we use those tools to figure out over the life of that asset, am I gonna get a return that's acceptable, to, that meets my hurdles? Yeah. And one of the things that is really, really important in places where there aren't enough EVs yet is like General Motors is coming to the party and they're paying us essentially $30,000 per charging stall to build ahead of demand. The state of Virginia, we, you know, we won the contract to build out fast charging in Virginia. That, that, that government program that was fueled by the D Volkswagen Dieselgate settlement, um, paid, D. Yeah, Appendix D, yeah. paid for 75% of that, which meant that we can go and build in places as a private company, or as a public company now, but we can go um, build in places where there aren't enough EVs yet, but we can get rid of that, we can eliminate that Gordian knot, that sense of, oh my gosh, I, might, I don't want to buy an EV if I don't see a charger in my grocery store parking lot. And EVgo loves to build chargers in your grocery store parking lot. And you can spread the risk. Uh, yeah, yeah. How, how much more forward can you pull the economics on that? Is it a two-year thing, a four-year thing? Uh, well, look, the, let me just give you the case example of California. California is the most advanced um, EV market in the United States. 60 plus, you may know the data better than me, 60 plus, 70 percent of EVs in America are being driven around California roads. EVgo is operating a profitable network in California right now because there are enough EVs to simply support the investment yeah. in, in more charging infrastructure. That's also true now in, I think, Denver, Portland, and a few other places. That is becoming, that will become true in more places depending on what the penetration of the EVs is. And as like I said, we have these sophisticated forecasting tools. But overlay on top of that, a $5 billion federal infrastructure program. Over the next five years. Over the next five years, whose aim is to make charging infrastructure ubiquitous and that will get players like EVgo to be able to build in places where there aren't yet enough EVs to, to you know, make your money back you know, absent that, that support. Do you think about it from the flip side? I mean, part of the thinking with Tesla keeping the network in-house is it sells their cars. Like, how big is a market of folks who will buy an EV or seriously consider one just because they finally see a station on the route they drive all the time? Well, if, or is if, that something you can't even care about or worry about? Oh, well, we, can, we care about it because we want our assets to get used, obviously. Yeah. But, but if, if the indications from the car makers are, are true, it matters a lot. I mean, when GM came to us you know, two years ago to cut this deal, they said, look, people care about price, they care about comfort, they care about range. We, what we, know, we know they need to feel comfortable that with, 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 with a couple hundred miles of range, they're still going to be able to charge conveniently. Therefore, we're going to invest in you, EVgo, to help build ahead of, ahead of when that demand is, because we know we need that to sell cars. Before the Hummer gets to the dealership. Right? This, was, this was before. We cut yeah. that deal beforehand. Similarly, you know, the, the program with Toyota, 
is that they're, you know, they're going to give away one year of unlimited charging on EVgo's network um, so that people feel comfortable buying the car. Yeah. So it is absolutely a part of the equation. If you're making EVs and you're mainstreaming EVs and you want, you know, you want them to become the, the product that everybody buys, that helping with the charging is, is a part of the equation. Um, before our session, I pulled up your map and I pulled up Electrify America. It seems they're much more focused on transportation corridors and point-to-point -point stuff. Is there, is that, is that a fair assessment for one? And is there any danger? Is there any, you know, do you stay up at night worrying that you're missing some opportunities in the Dakotas where you have no stations or yeah. Montana and Wyoming? We we look at every opportunity, but we always look at it through the lens of is it is, is it a good investment for our shareholders? Corridors to date have not made any financial sense at all. Like we could not make them pencil. Um, anywhere. And anywhere. I mean, well, virtually anywhere. I mean, we've got some, I mean, the, the definition of a corridor, the Department of Transportation has an official definition of a corridor that's part of the NEVI infrastructure bill stuff. Yeah. But so we would have, it, there do also happen to be some, inter, like Los Angeles, you could say, is one big interstate highway because of the freeways. That, that, that has enough density, um, unfortunately, <laughs> sometimes. Um, but so for, for us, we haven't wanted to. The dynamics change be, with, with the federal infrastructure money that's coming. Because again, that is focused for the first year, at least, only on corridors, right. and so the economics might change. So we're we're looking we're looking forward to participating in that in that and um, and being able to extend our geographic footprint. The other, I mean, do you want me to talk a little bit about extend? Yeah, I was going to so, ask. Yeah. So another another thing that we've added to our to our offering is there may be. Um, gas station chains in rural America where it doesn't make sense for us to own the asset because the utilization may be intermittent, but the gas station owner says, I, I want to broaden my product suite. So what EVgo is offering to do there is um, do the construction services, sell the equipment to the, to the gas station operator, and then operate it for them as part of EVgo's network, which is a, you know best in country network, yeah. through under the banner EVgo Extend. It's almost like Intel inside, but EVgo Extend. So you're part of the EVgo network and the service and the branding that comes with it, but we don't necessarily own the asset itself. And you're also talking to rural utilities, development funds, that kind of thing? Yeah. It does seem like there's an in-between, though, between North Dakota and the Whole Foods of Los Angeles. Yeah. Like, northern New England, you seem to have a lot of stations now. The Carolinas, is there kind of like a, a mixed use yeah. model? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. I mean, we, again, we, there's, there's a, there's a, it turns out that people, if you go to an urban center and you, and you do a radius of a couple hundred miles outside of that to where grandma or your cousins might live or whatever, people will still drive that distance. So as there are more EVs, what we basically do is we develop models what, what is going to make financial sense because how much use is the asset going to get? Yeah. And so like what we're seeing in, say, down the, down the spine of the United States, say from you know, Wisconsin, Minneapolis, all the way down through, I mean, if you go straight down, is that Texas? I presume it is, because Texas is so big. But down those sort of verticals, those, those are going to be interesting geographies, and those are also geographies that GM's really interested in us building, and right. Toyota wants to be selling cars there. So th the economics, it's a snowball, right? It, the snowball is, it, we're at, I do, you, I think you asked at the beginning, are we at an inflection point? I certainly feel like we are. Yeah. Like the momentum is on our side. You know, the snowball is rolling down the hill and getting bigger and bigger. Um, and that's, that's all good news. We've talked about the red tape and the permitting process. You, I think you said 18 months on average. It to get used from to be. like, let's build one here to yeah. turning it on. And you want to get that down to six months. Is that, how hard does that make your job? <laughs> like, are there a bunch of places where you're just starting things? Starting things off, thinking like in 18 months we might be yeah so totally so ramped. EVgo, we we are able to construct a high ultra fast charging station with four to six to eight stalls in a period of four to eight weeks. Once we start digging, that's how long it takes us to do our piece of it. Yeah. But before we can actually start to dig, the landlord has to allow us to do that, build it there. The landlord, because it's high power, the utility needs to put add some more equipment to the site, and that requires an easement. So that is a, another part of the process. The utility has to approve the design because it's connecting to the grid. Um, so all of that's like free work. 
and, and the local government authority has to give us a permit, and sometimes they want to specify what kind of landscaping and plants go there. All of that takes time. And then at the tail end, before we're allowed to have a, an EV drive up to the EVgo station and charge, the utility has to come and do a final inspection. So to go from the four to eight weeks of construction to the, it used to be 18 months, it's now probably down to, on average, between 12 and 15, so it's getting better right. um, because the flywheel's starting to spin. Um, it's all of those extra pieces around the outside. It's an ecosystem, you know, like it, it takes a village to build a fast charging station. But you are, you are moving the needle on that. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we've, we've established this initiative called Connect the Watts, which, um, which is basically a, a, a group of all of us industry players, local governments, utilities, site hosts that are landlords, equipment vendors, we bring everybody together and we talk about, we share best practice. And it's, in, and it's fun because sometimes, like, like New Jersey has a model ordinance which the local government has figured out how to streamline permitting for fast charging stations, right. just like we did with solar probably 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. They're now doing it with fast charging. So the, the, the person who runs that program in New Jersey got onto one of our salons and was able to tell that story to the other local government authorities that were on the phone are like, oh, well, maybe we can do that. So EVgo is happy to like sort of contribute this to the conversation because obviously it makes our job easier. Get everyone talking about it. Yeah. Um, we're out of time. I want to ask one last question, though. Do you think charging is a non-issue for someone considering a car, or are they still preferential towards Tesla just because it has 15,000 cords around the country? Uh, my job is to make them completely comfortable. I would say it's still a work in progress. I think, I think you, what you want to do is think about how, I mean, what our research says is the number one criteria for, for EV drivers is, is there a fast charging station look close to where I need to use it? Is it in a convenient place? I would say, you know, we, you, know you, can, you can look on PlugShare and you can see where all the chargers are um, and like, what are your favorite routes if you're going to go visit your in-laws? You know, are there, are there chargers? Yeah. And, if there are places where you think this would be a really good location, then drop us an email because we'd like to know that that matters to you. Perfect. Thank you. Kathy Zoe, everyone. Thanks.